So did IGN just get called out for lazy reporting about the Halo Infinite situation? Well, let's take a look at it. Halo Infinite 343 statement runs against deep cuts in Halo development team. 343 says Halo is staying put, but social media posts and internal sources paint a different picture, which I would kind of agree with the statement because like I mentioned in a previous video that from what we got from 343 about like that one singular message, little tweet image picture that just kind of said like Halo's going nowhere. It was like, well, coming from 343, you would hope they'd say something like that because that's what you want to do to make sure people stay confident with the franchise and things like that. They're just going to say like, yeah, we cut the campaign and we're only going to support the multiplayer for like until like Tatanka releases. Then people are going to be like, well, I'm not playing anymore. There's a reason why it feels a little more invested to uh, say the things that 343 said. The Halo developer 343 Industries says Master Chief and Cortana are staying under its roof, but reports of deep cuts for Halo's development staff calls into question the studio's ability to sustainably develop Halo content. The saga began last week with a bunch of layoffs right here since news broke speculation has run rampant about Microsoft's plans with the flagship franchise, including rumors that Microsoft could pass Halo development with another studio entirely, leaving 343 Industries in more of a producer role, which I mean, and it would make sense, honestly, because of the hiring freeze that we have right now going on with Microsoft as a whole. I mean, 343 hasn't been able to hire a lot of people for months now. So they've already been kind of super short staff. And then you basically cut out the campaign team for what all the reports say that, yeah, that's... It's gonna be pretty tough to make a Halo game when your team is completely, you know, gutted. Yeah, you know, I've seen low counts of layout saying 60, where high counts have seen over 100. Where they said previously that like 343 staff, like at max, like 450 uh, employees there. So that's like a huge portion just gone overnight. That's kind of crazy. These rumors prompted 343 Industries to speak out over the weekend that put rumblings to rest. Same PR hints with the message that we kind of covered here saying Halo and Master Chief are here to stay. The industries will continue to develop Halo and in the future, including epic stories, multiplayer, and more of what makes Halo great. Their hints or hints. The hints, hints, I don't know. But, you know, I talked about this in a previous video that I uploaded, and like they could still develop Halo, but not necessarily be like the forefront developer, right? Like currently 343 said that well, 343 was like listed as the developer for the MCC, but we know from what we've heard from the history is that, well, 343 was more just kind of like managing the project and they had a lot of the external studios like Certain Infinity, which helped out a lot with Halo 2 anniversary stuff. Uh, Saber Interactive did a lot of the, the porting over to the MCC as well, where it seems like I think 343 did more of like just like the UI and kind of facilitated the whole project, which so I would say consider developing the game, you know, but they did something that would add to the game, but not exactly like had their hands dirty with the project. They say, I mean, at least 343 said something in that situation because of it needing to be said, like speculation was running wild after the news dropped about the layoffs. And that would make sense as well. Be, you know, when you lose a third of your team effectively, you know, people start wondering like, what's the future of the franchise? And that two sentences from Pierre Heinz doesn't really reassure me about what's going on with Halo at the moment. It seemed really much more straightforward. Like, hey guys, at the moment, Halo's still our thing, which I'm sure it is. I bet you that statement that Pierre Heinz said was 100% true, but is it really what's going to happen? I don't know. And I think we could see, like, like I mentioned in my previous video, that I think we could see 343 taking much more of a role of a developer, kind of like how Treyarch and Sledgehammer and Infinity Ward are doing with Call of Duty, where I think they kind of more like the, the the people who have like the the leads that create the ideas, and then they kind of contract out smaller development studios to do the dirty work essentially. Like Raven Software for Warzone, they didn't create Warzone, but they manage it, where they kind of help maintain the balance, update the game, stuff like that. And Infinity Ward's kind of like, all right, now it's your thing, go go deal with it. I think Bees Knox is another development team that works specifically for just the PC port of Call of Duty. I think Destiny 2 does a similar thing where they have a dedicated development team just for the PC port, which I think would be super beneficial for me as a PC player. You know, I like to see all the extra features come our way. The studio has struggled to meet Halo Infinite release day multiple times. Uh, can the recently downsized 343 continue to handle development of the big budget AAA first person shooter franchise? It's hard to say, which I would totally agree with that because it seems a little difficult at the moment. As I said, IGN reached out to Xbox representatives, but did not receive a comment ahead of publication. Kind of makes sense right there because I'm pretty sure most people at 3 are like, we don't know what's happening. Just we're trying to deal with just what just happened, which is just kind of crazy that 
you know, a lot of the development team and the developers there only found out about the layoffs the day that we found out about the layoffs. I mean, I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure like the high up management, maybe like Joseph Staten, maybe Pierre Heinz probably knew about it, but uh, I doubt uh, anyone else really did. Because I'm sure, or actually probably more like the management team of like that led like specific uh, development aspects of Halo probably knew about it, but that's really about it. But you can imagine as like a manager, just like having to choose that and be like, sorry, dude. I know you love this job. You've worked your ass off to get here and you've worked your ass to be here and done a great job, but I had to pick somebody, you know, that's that's tough. IGN has learned that significant cuts have been made uh, to 343's development team. Uh, one former 343 employee impacted by the layoffs estimated that about a quarter of 343 staff was impacted, which would make about sense for what we've heard about from reports although it's not a firm statistic. However, based on conversations that IGN has had with knowledgeable sources, the situation at 343 appears to be ongoing, obvious right there, and there is a growing, if unconfirmed, conviction that 343 will no longer be Halo's sole developer when it's settled. I think that would make sense. Despite a strong launch at the end of 2021 that included the praise of both Halo Infinite's fresh take on the Halo campaign and the franchise's first ever free-to-play multiplayer, the cracks quickly started to show. Fans instantly pushed back against Infinite's controversial multiplayer progression system as 343 scrambled to fix the shop and battle pass, which, yeah. It definitely needed that. Problems didn't stop there with the cancellation of split screen co-op, lengthy delays to forge, and long content droughts. <laughs> the whole year and a half of Halo has been a content drought, man. 343 rapidly started creative exodus after the launch with 343 founder Bonnie Ross, multiplayer creative director Tom French, and lead narrative designer Aaron Lind all leave the company in 2022. And that's just scratching the surface of how many people left. Talking about Patrick Rand, who also left and went to go work on Jedi Survivor. We all know his statement saying like, well, yeah, Halo should be in a better spot. We, us developers tried really hard to make it good, but a lot of the people in the management situation didn't really do a good job, which I think we can kind of agree with at this point. You know, we've had enough go arounds with 343 Halo games that we can clearly see that like, it's the people who are making these big, you know, decisions at 343 who are just dropping the ball, honestly. You now we had it with Halo 4, MCC, Halo 5, now infinite as well which is because infinite hurts the most because like they were doing so many right things they had so many good ideas going on with infinite but clearly asking more of the development team that they could actually receive which again is poor management not knowing the, their full capabilities as a team and from what i've heard like what they went through multiple iterations of halo infinite like at one point it could have been a hero shooter which ooh, that would have been a spicy news story if it was a freaking hero shooter. My goodness. Yeah, it's like talking about Joseph Stane going back to Xbox Publishing, which I think this one with Joseph Stane going back to Xbox Publishing, I think once they knew that the campaign was getting basically cut no with no campaign DLC, that Joseph Stane's like, why would I stay with the company, you know? He kind of just there to kind of just help, you know, keep the ship on course. And if anything's going wrong, you call in Joseph State and he helps fixing the whole thing. So maybe since we've seen that 343 is putting, you know, extra focus on to the multiplayer, right? I mean, they stated that back in September that they were looking to do more focus on the live service, stuff like that. So that's why they had to basically cut couch co-op, which I'm not too bent out about it, honestly. I mean, it sucks that it's gone. I wish it was there, but uh, if some things were to get cut, it'd probably be couch co-op, honestly. And it seems like 343 is kind of just, was just starting to get on the right track too with three, with Halo Infinite, right? Get into seasonality, get into a good flow of content, making some good moves. And then a third of the works of horse gets cut. Like, sheesh, man. Now that Joseph's staying, Seemed to, once he got onto the team, bought 343 an extra year's worth of development time. And then now it seems like things are kind of on the right course. I think it's probably about the right time for Justin to probably hop back over to the publishing side of things. Even though he did say in a previous IGN interview that he was kind of like here to stay for the foreseeable future kind of thing. I, uh, I took his word a little bit more to serious on that interview view though uh just because i thought i remember him being like i'm here to stay but it was more just kind of like uh i'm here to help out as long as i ne need it and you know not you know guaranteeing anything which kind of makes more sense with joe's stating so sucks to see him go i'm sure you probably wanted to stay on if they could make a whole campaign but you know, it sucks to see him go. Uh, saying, regardless what happens with Halo in the future, it is clear that the initial 10 year plan of Halo Infinite isn't playing out exactly as Microsoft had hoped. That's very true. For now, Halo Infinite Season 3 Echoes Within is still set to kick off early March, adding new maps, new modes, 
and weapons to the game. So I would, like I said in previous videos as well, that like I pretty much from our end as players, I would expect that the 2023, the play out as usual, uh, a lot of the content for season three is pretty much done. They just probably putting the finishing polish on a lot of things. Work has been going with season four. And you know, from the rumors that we've seen that, you know, Extraction and Flood are gonna be the two big things coming in the Halo Infinite with Infection and Extraction. Uh, but you know, I've covered those multiple times on the channel. We know the tweets, we know the leaked stuff. I'm sure season five is probably already planned out what the ideas that they want to do but I'm, I'm assuming that with how development has gone for Halo Infinite that I couldn't imagine much being done much more than just like the or should I say the conceptual stage when it comes to Halo Infinite season 5 but of course we'll wait and see what actually what exactly happens and you never know if the Tonka rolls around in the rumored time frame of early 2024 you never know you never know maybe it could be awesome and it's gonna be made by a certain affinity they've been pretty much at the helm of the whole thing that's like their little baby is Tatanka. So we'll see how it plays out yeah, I have high hopes. I mean, Sony Infinity's done a pretty good job, but of course, Sony Infinity has been working hand in hand with 343 throughout the entirety of 343 running Halo. Clearly, you know, some things have been great, some things not so great. I think a lot of people point to the H2A remake that Sony Infinity made as like, they're the true Halo developers and stuff like that, but I don't know, man. At this point, when it comes to Halo, I'm just like, you know, I'll, I'll put more weight on what I actually see and what's actually happening than uh, speculation and past actions and this is where IGN actually gets called out by a member of 343 about lazy reporting essentially and what happened here they basically quoted the article stating that 343 is looking to be more of a publisher rather than a developer of Halo I think it's still too early to tell what's going on with this but you see John Unishek over here saying this just dispelled that rumor this weekend which maybe they were already planning to put this article together kind of thing but I just can't believe that you'd still have full capability to develop a Halo game when you lose reportedly up to a third of your staff. That is a lot of people. Though that's a statement that 343 would have to come out with because you don't want to have people lose faith in the franchise and your ability to develop Halo games. Because if you say like, yeah, you know, we're kind of looking to be a publisher, moving things away from us kind of thing. I think that's going to affect Halo Infinite and the, the morale of 343 who have to continue working on this game for the rest of this year. And like I've been saying, June of 2024 is when you really Really will understand what the true future of Halo is going to be. Right now, everything's set in stone for 2023, so for us, it can be business as usual. As this is a developing story, I'll let you guys know once we get some more information. 